All right, yeah, let's get started. So yeah, congratulations, Michaela, you win. <laughs> so you get to do the recap. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, last time on Corsa, uh, Corsa, the Curse of Light, um, the party, uh, upon finally reaching the top of the library, stumbled on to Feather and her gang of mainly just uh, husks that I'm not entirely sure how, but were uh, you know being controlled via like the soul battle thing, uh, and a uh, shape changer in the form of Denudo Steel uh, were in the process of igniting the brazier uh, basin and claiming Phoenix's power for themselves. Um, stopped by a, I believe, a, a falling Zalia <laughs> and a coin tossed in Feather's direction by Twig. Uh, an ensuing battle took place, uh, one that uh, almost, well, was going fine. Until Feather stabbed herself with the Ember Blade, or so, yeah, the sort of the Ember Knight, and seemed to have taken Phoenix power within herself, grew fiery wings, and proceeded to almost pretty much kill everyone. Uh, I think with everyone aside from. Schumann going down to death saving throws. Uh, Michaela managed to roll a natural 20 on her death saving throw, and then in her turn, deal like 50 damage and takes down a uh, phase two feather in a series of swift and powerful blows. Uh, after stabilizing everyone, Picking up the Ember Blade and uh, the group not letting the uh, doppelganger uh, leave alive. <laughs> uh, Michaela, or, or I should say, uh, Chuman stabilized the party and then Michaela walked the sword over to the basin and let it sort of bathe in the power of the flames of her birth. And that's where we ended. And so, uh, after stoking the flames of the Ember Blade and empowering it with the enchantment within uh, Phoenix Feather on the ground behind you, and you look around at the circle of flames, one remains extinguished. And gathering together and nursing your hurts, your foes either return to dust or lay fallen at your feet. What would you like to do in the firelight? Uh, I mean, you all feel much more uh, empowered, a uh, little warm, a little warmth coalescing around you all. Uh, having at least uh, poked the flames with the Ember Blade, uh, the Ember Blade certainly seems stronger. Uh, has more uh, going on with it now. You can feel it kind of resonating in your hand there, Michaela. <clears throat> um, Sheet very tiredly um, step back from the fire uh, and sort of shamble back over to pastiche and would at least attempt to try and hand like hand over the uh the sword of the Ember Knight. Okay. Wordlessly, or did uh, you say anything? Or? Um, I, no. So, 
it's just to try to do it while saying, um, if if you still wish to carry it to prestige, uh, but I don't. Again, like I know there's been difficulty with giving up this sword for other characters in the past, so this is why I said attempt. Okay, give me uh, a wisdom saving throw. <laughs> if they, it, you finish the sentence in your mind if they wish to carry mm -hmm. it they're going to have to go through you Ugh. over your dead body okay then I wouldn't say that then mm -hmm. uh, I guess I just kind of hold it um <sighs> Michaela, uh, if you would be so kind, uh, well, wounds aside, it does feel like something has uh, left me since I dropped the Ember Blade. That would be the empowerment from the Phoenix. Uh, I'd be surprised if you could even give the sword. Once you let go, or once you grab onto it, it feels as if you can't let go. Mm. But... It's rather... inconvenient. Ugh. Yeah, it's very, it's, it's very inconvenient uh, that you have these people that think that they can handle it better than you can. <laughs> sort of shakes away an uh, intrusive thought. Uh... That's the true purpose of the DM, isn't it? You're just the mm -hmm. universe's intrusive thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wait, is that saving throw a... Um... This is technically considered a charm effect. <laughs> Um, uh, mm, that is a good question. Mm. Let me, uh, let me, let me consider. I guess would it, a one d four even be enough to change this outcome? Well, I from can't tell you that. Okay. Um. Do you get a, a bonus on charm? What is the bonus? I have uh, this thing. If you tune to the orb, you make a saving throw against the effect regarding charm effects, you may add 1d4. Okay. Way. The marble orb of shielding. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it would be a, a charm type effect. Okay. I'll just roll that. It's a 1, so it's only a 10 anyways. There are three lunatics <laughs> ahead of you. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough. Um, Only three? You're off to the side. Oh. <laughs> Do I count for multiple? <laughs> Can I count as two lunatics, please? And you then you sense the presence of another one, but they seem to be <laughs> holding off <laughs> and watching you wordlessly. I mean, technically it's four because of the war. <laughs> Perhaps... At this point, Pestish, I would give this to you, then I believe I would feel the same effects. I think mean, perhaps we need Timothy to find someone capable of, of restoration magics. Surely. Uh, there is someone capable of this within the academy. Okay. Yes, well, uh, make sure you take good care of that thing. Until then. 
She very seriously nods. Of course, it's my life. <laughs> uh... Well, we have came to lit the brazier. Stopped Feather in the process. I don't suppose there is anything else that we must do here. I hope... I hope not. I think... I could really use a rest right now. Um, right you are. Uh... I mean, Michaela, I guess, would just... No, that there's not, like imminent threat and risk. I guess we'll just kind of take the opportunity to look around the room. Um, <clears throat> like, actually take in the environment and see what exactly is here. Yeah, give me a perception check. <laughs> 27. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Um, uh, let's see here. I'll I'll give you a redescription of the room. Um, since you had to kind of rush in here, of course, you didn't mm -hmm. get the chance to really see a whole lot. Um, so there are many, uh, flickers of firelight around. Um, the, you're in an enclosed room. The ceiling has, uh, just an ocean of pictographs. They, huge lines, they kind of interweave with one another, depicting all, uh, uh, de sorry, depicting uh, dragons and phoenixes, um, various uh, depictions of fire and water, um, knightly figures clad in armor, um, some wispy elements that you get the sense are, are describing souls, um, some monstrous looking creatures, um, and that reflects in the shallow water uh, that covers the floor. It's like ankle high. Um, also hanging from the ceiling are tapestries that depict the massive uh, clockwork dragonfly um, that is the uh, symbol of Durlusk. Um, there's fountains that spew out little... Uh, yeah, there's fountains that spew out water. Uh, clean water, you notice. Um, and then there's two rounded platforms. And then the fires in the middle. Um, one of them's extinguished, and, uh, you notice that, um, let's see, Feather's body is gone, but her, um, her, uh, her personal effects are still on the ground. Uh, Vran has also not disappeared, and all of the, uh, Darsk Dusk Archive gang that you fought have all disappeared into dust and ash. Um, except for one of them, which is a masked, uh, fellow that, um, that you guys dispatched over to the west. So, a peaceful scene, um, when everyone is not stabbing each other. And in all, all this mm -hmm. on top of, um... Uh, like just this the secret space above the greatest space of knowing on Corsair. Hmm. Um. Uh, with the twenty-seven, you also um on the ground. Uh, near, so sorry, on the ground in the middle platform, the middle circle platform, you see the, mm -hmm. um, like the little book of, uh, runic magic fire stuff, uh, that Feather had taken, or Feather had with her that she had taken from the library when Zelia first found her in, uh, in the city. Uh, that's on the ground as well. Um... I guess. 
if no one else would, Michaela would probably try and pick those things up. Uh, okay. They would probably look at the things that Feather had from the library out of interest. Okay. Um, let's see. Slide me a cheeky arcana check. I think uh, after Chuma gets a breather for himself, and then he starts looking to see like what I guess weapons or items are still around after the aftermath of the battle. Yeah, uh, for Chuma that'll probably represent picking up that weird red flashy greatsword. Mm -hmm. um, but just the various uh, like weird junky looking daggers. Um, some short swords, a scimitar. Uh, um, let's see. There's Vran's uh, fancy blue rapier. Um, and give me a, an investigation check. Uh, for Zalia, yeah, the, this spell book is pretty old. Uh, it has some uh, ancient looking destructive spells in it. Um, ostensibly all uh, all banned magic, <laughs> apparently, uh, in order for it to have been tucked away in a library. Um, it has descriptions of lots of fire magic. It is definitely some nasty stuff. It will. It goes on about how to send out huge cataclysmic explosions of fire, how to throw down um, a trap of sorts, uh, or at least to time the blast of another kinetic explosion uh, of thermal energy. It, is, it describes how to send forth a blazing line, um, basically a laser <laughs> of uh, mm. concentrated heat energy. Um, it describes how to form the column of fire that Feather formed from uh, the scorched runes on her palm. Um, and it goes on to describe much and more fire magic. Um, yep. Uh, while people are checking this stuff out, Pestige would definitely make a point to look at that thing that Feather shot them with. Oh, yeah. Uh, you and Chuman, you can uh, work together and find it. Uh, it's a gun! <laughs> it's it's this weird wand that she had. It's got like the stock of a crossbow, but no but no like taut string or tension or anything like that. You don't load anything into it that you can see until like the, the barrel chamber falls like falls open and you can see like little things that go into it. It's actually armed with uh, crystals. And as you inspect it more, it's pink salmon color crystals. This thing uses dragon shards for ammunition. Mm. Uh, what that contraption needs you. <laughs> it, it seems like it expels um, either a dragon shard itself, or it expels some kind of energy from the dragon shard through the 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 long like tube, the the metac or sorry, the metallic tube that it has. It has like a like a locking mechanism that you can push down. Um, on the side is uh, carved the letters Y E E H A W. Oh my god. <laughs> um, I guess this is a slight history question for it. Like, has there been multiple ones known in Corsair for guns or? Uh, roll a history check. Something about being underground. <laughs> You're not <laughs> quite sure about the about the historical significance of Corsair, but uh, underground. Now this doesn't exist. Uh, in the in the caves and caverns and tunnels that you've explored, you've met many a monster and a demon that can shoot forth energy, but not from such a device. But it yeah. it operates under similar principles. That you, as you and Pastiche work together and mess with it, I assume that includes my knowledge around the hometown as well, right? Or nothing, my own hometown. Yeah, uh, and then back in the the Tumulus Kingdom, no, this the, such a treasure is not kept within your vaults. Not the ones you have access to anyway, <laughs> or had access to. 
I think while that's happening, Twig would see if there's any anything interesting on Rayan. Okay, yeah, give me an investigation check. Take me a second to find it. Hmm. Huge, Michaela. What you what did you say you were doing? I, th I feel like I got distracted from you. Uh, just picking up um, feathers, personal effects. If other okay. people weren't already doing that. All right, investigation for you too. But I think people were. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, as uh, you uh, and like pastiche and Juman are kind of like all working together on on feather. Uh, go ahead and roll again. Uh, for Vran, uh, Twig, yeah, you you get over there after Chuman purloins uh, his cerulean blue rapier that he has, <laughs> um, but a twenty three is pretty good. Um, you find on uh, around Vran's waist is a series of pockets and pouches, and in them are all different kinds of um, fine powders and gravels and dusts. Um, they, uh, are not labeled, but they all, uh, ostensibly do different things, <laughs> uh, but, and they're easily enough to remove and attach to your own belt or put in your backpack or something. Um, you also, f with a 23, you also find his library card. <laughs> um, his, his name is just Ryan, um, and... He is a member of, or his major is theater magic, um, and there is a little uh, glitter scribble um, as well that has like a uh, um, has like an arcane signature on it, and from the explanation you received on library cards, that uh, you know that. He has uh, invented one spell. Um, also on his arm, you notice a um, just like a little wrap. Sorry, not not a little wrap. Like you, you know, some thread. It's multicolored thread. Um, it's like a, a green, black, and a red, and it's just a little tiny little little bracelet of thread, and it's tied together in the um, the ends. Um, are charred off to keep it there. Uh, that is on his right wrist. And it's like attached? Yeah. I mean, you could cut it off, but uh, it's 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 been kind of like knotted and then burned that so you can't really oh, untie okay. it un unless you like cut it real good. <laughs> I think Twig will take the powders and the library card, and okay. the bracelet. Okay. Uh, on Feather, everyone messing with that, um, there is... Uh, you already got the spell book. Uh, who has the gun? Uh, I mean, the weird wand. I would like to hold on to this. I think it's Pastiche. <laughs> yeah, I think Pastiche was the one initially holding on to it. All right. Uh, you see, uh, pastiche you now have in your inventory, deal closer. <laughs> uh, let's see here. There's Feather's Color Shifting Feather Cloak. Um, you're already very familiar with it on uh, how it has a normal purple to white gradient hue, um, but does have the ability to change colors. Um, you find her library card uh, just floating in the in the water. Um, on it, it uh, does not have the nickname Feather. Uh, it has the name Jarette Aylins. Uh It also has uh, the words "magic sucks" like S U X scribbled on it. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a couple glittering uh, scribbles or signatures uh, indicating that she has invented uh, one, two, three. You count magical spells. Uh, she also uh, had a research journal on her. Hmm. Uh, Kayla, what, 
I guess, collect the library card just for, like, identification purposes. Um, and... Would be vaguely interested in the research journal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it is... Sort of skim through it. Yeah, it's clasped closed. I think for um, like locked. Clips? Yeah, uh, it's it's just got like a little um, like it's a it's like a leather thing. Um, you notice that there mm -hmm. there's a like a page, like there's a couple like torn scratches um on the outer rims of the pages, and it's clasped closed though, um, and like a little bit watery. Mm -hmm. I think Chumin will probably take the rapier, and then. Because he got blasted by it multiple times, probably look at the daggers <laughs> from the dust. Okay. In your inventory is the blue sky rapier. Um, and yeah, let me get you one of those weird daggers. That'll that'll be coming. Michaela, you want to look at the journal? Yeah. All right. Make a uh, dexterity saving throw. Okay. Wait, sorry, not dexterity. Um, this is constitution. What's your constitution saving throw uh, bonus? Uh, zero. So okay, so a six. Um, all right. Michaela opens the <laughs> opens the journal, and then there is a puff of uh, pinkish, purplish uh, smoke that wafts into her face, and she falls onto onto the ground, face down. Michaela is unconscious. You you all hear us splash in the water. Valia walks up and pokes her. She is unresponsive. Chuman turns around. What what happened? Tweet's just gonna make sure her face isn't in the water and check if she's breathing. Okay, medicine check. Uh, Zilla, you can mess and check too. Please. Oh my god, a medicine. You oh both get a natural <laughs> twenty. <laughs> Alright. Uh, she is still breathing, Michaela is. Um, she hasn't spontaneously died. Uh, that would be very unfortunate. Um, but there is some kind of affliction on her now. Uh, you get that it you sense that it is magical in nature, but uh, also, um, uh, what's the word? Organic in nature. So there's two effects on her um, that are kind of working in tandem. So it's like there's a like an organic that has been wrapped in magic uh, trap, basically on the clasp of the journal that has affected her, um, and she is. Breathing, but unconscious and unresponsive. Is, is she all right? Well, it seems like it, but I'm not sure how to wake her up. Uh, did any of you see what took her out in the first place. I did not see it. Wait, Zalia? Zalia shakes her head. Twig does as well. Do we, do we see, like, uh... Like anything on the ground that would indicate what she was doing? Uh, on the ground, let's see. On the ground would be the Ember Blade. Uh, if any, if Michaela was holding anything else, would be the journal. Uh, so yeah, there's a there's a research journal. Um, the library card for um, for Feather and the Ember Blade is, uh, are all on the ground. Do you think there may have been some sort of 
trap with the research journal? Well, the Ember Blade certainly didn't do this. Right. He's I don't remember it either. How are we going to carry that thing now? As for the journal, it wouldn't be the first trapped book we came across. Is it still closed now, or is it open? Uh, it has fallen open. Maybe there's something in it about what's happening to him? Uh, well... Not sure what else to do. I can use one more cure spell, but I'll be pretty drained from there. Well, it couldn't hurt. Probably. All right. There's no objections, you know. Give it a shot. I think Twig will also start just looking through the pages of the journal that that it like fell open to. Okay. Just looking to see if there's anything uh, about what's happening to Michaela. Human places a hand on Michaela and uh, casts cure wounds. Okay. You place a hand on Michaela, and she feels suddenly cold and clammy to the touch um, as you brush your fingers on her skin. Um, your, you send your uh, primal magic towards her, um, but it kind of cascades across her skin, and it doesn't... Uh, you're not able to infuse her with your essence. The healing has no effect. Do I get that sensation back, like as if I, as if something is blocking the spell, or? Yes. Okay. Um, wow. Go ahead. Twig, as you're reading, uh, there isn't anything in here about, um, like. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> I have trapped the journal with. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, but uh, you do get what amounts to Feather's, uh, <laughs> Feather's thesis. Um, it looks like she's been studying uh, and observing and manipulating and experimenting with dragon shards for some years uh, and doing it all in like extracurriculum work. Um, there's a torn half page uh, detailing experiments that coupled with your own torn half page explains that she's had um, successful unsuccessful question mark trials with classmates that are now part of the dusk archive um, recently in Baskar and uh, she has determined that a soul battle can affect any living creature um, and also inanimate objects can be created to function similarly as dragon shards um, there's mention of um, automatons in deep underground, excuse me, in deep underground ruins that act strangely. Uh, Feather likens them to wanderers, um, and there's a note that sticking dragon shards in them uh, give them a personality, and they start acting like normal people. <sighs> um, there's various doodles of muscles. Uh, there's a guy like doing like double bicep crunches um various shirtless men there's a there's a photo of um like bodybuilder digest well it's definitely feathers but nothing on what's happening to michaela i'm afraid well the whatever this is it wouldn't allow cure wounds to work. Michaela, you suffer nice. one damage, one poison damage. It's but nothing like an gonna... period. They always gonna look around for any sort of item that her soul might have disappeared into. Uh, let's see here. 
You... Sorry, not poison damage, necrotic damage. Um, make a perception check and or an arcana check. Hey, that is so much better at perception checks. Sorry, this is a mistake. <laughs> um, you don't see anything. Um, but Zalia, because you have spent so much time in libraries, other places of learning, with Alma, doing your own experimentation, hanging out with Sparkers, throughout the entire part of your journey, you were allowed to do an Arcana check here, and uh, you don't see anything, but you feel something because of your learnings that the arcane weave is dynamic and very active here. Um, so you briefly think back a little bit uh, about how the anima suddenly shifted in the air and you start investigating your own person. Uh, you have a dragon shard on your, uh, on your own person that uh, ostensibly uh, does not or did not carry a soul. Um, so if that's what you're looking for, you you have such an item on your person. He will tentatively put it up to Michaela. Uh, so you take out this salmon-colored crystal. Um, it is elongated, diamond-shaped. Um, Uh, would it do anything? Yeah, we'll give it a, a we'll give it a fun little shine. Kelly, okay, you suffer one more necrotic damage. Did uh, the cure wounds actually happen? Did no. that go off and heal me? Okay. We should hurry up and get back. At least maybe Alma and Alma might know something about this. Well, are we... Are we certain she's... Alright? I mean, is she stable? I'm not exactly sure. The, the most I know is that Cure Wounds did not work on her. So... Whatever it could be, it's blocking magic. I don't. Any of us are exactly stable after that fight, so we should probably hurry. We do have a problem, though. The twig just points at the amber blade. Doesn't Michaela still need to hold on to that? Oh, does this count as me being unattuned to it? You don't know. Well, do I take the damage? <laughs> uh, not yet. Okay. <laughs> I have an idea. Shuman kind of like rips the robe. Or the... Kind of like robe type clothing that he has on him. And then wraps it around the Ember Blade. At least then it won't attune to one of us if we're holding it. Uh, uh, if if that's too much trouble, uh, I Layla's could simply. gonna look at her with the with the fucking magnifying glass. Okay. Uh, I could simply hold on to the ember blade myself. Uh, Twig looks slightly dubious. Well, normally I have no objections. You, you remember how much it affected anyone who lost attunement to it. Uh, yes, I feel its effects quite intensely at the moment. 
So, if anything, we should keep it under wraps. That way, then Michaela stays attuned. Last thing we need is the Ember Blade to also add to this issue. Asish like opens their mouth to start speaking, swallows the words. I suppose you're right. Uh, Michaela, you suffer one necrotic damage. <laughs> yep. Um, Zalia, as you take out your magnifying glass and you examine Michaela, um, unfortunately, nothing quite happens. Like that. Yeah. While that's happening, Chuman goes to grab Michaela and uh, hoist her body alongside over her over his back. We should hurry. We've been here for longer than what we should. Do we notice Michaela's like declining uh, condition? Or does she still seem uh, unconscious but stable? Um, make another medicine or a perception. Do you notice purple bubbles? Uh... <laughs> A 20 is pretty good. Um, as you're conversing with your companions, uh, you cast a glance down at Michaela and suddenly she seems a little more like her skin seems a little bit more drawn back uh slightly more emaciated um her lidded eyes um have sunk a little bit into her into her sockets something's wrong wait i think something's going wrong with michaela she might have been poisoned Twig will, like, point out the symptoms. Michaela, you suffer one necrotic damage. Tumen turns around. All the more reason we need to leave. Unless any one of you guys have antidotes. Twig will pull out the pouches from Vrayan. Maybe? But none of these are labeled. I couldn't have any idea what they do. Well, try it as we're walking. It's the best. Uh, it's better than us staying here. Human starts to head off. Or at least head back. Oh, who was uh, examining Vran? It was a Twig, uh, right? Would... Yeah. Uh, you also find a map of Cyril. Or at least a map labeled Cyril. You're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm carrying Michaela back. Chuman hefts Michaela over his shoulder and starts heading back towards the uh, invisible inky stairs. So are we just gonna, like, we're going back to the merchant king? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Unless you have any better ideas. Unless you consider trying these pouches at random a better idea? <laughs> yeah. I think we'll make better time if we simply move. All right. Be sure to grab the Ember Blade as you head out. And 
Human starts heading down the stairs. <laughs> oh, is it still there? Hey, you just picked up Michaela. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay, so you, ra Michaela's you wrapped, you wrapped it in your cloak and then put it on the ground? Is that what happened? Uh... Actually, yeah, that that makes sense. Thing. <laughs> no, I probably still have it though. That's okay. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think ahead. Blue brain moment. All right. Uh, let's see. So you guys head back down past the. Uh, past the books arguing, um, as you move through them or move between them, they regard you for a moment question mark and then go back to arguing about uh, what makes a good story um, you come back to the book uh, make your way past there uh, you heft and hoist and move your way past the uh, large pages um, and after a few minutes of looking for uh, your bird friend, um, you find the Merchant King, Alma Sonoma, um, alongside Mouse. They are resting towards the, um, towards the first rooms. Um, they are resting near the glass pool with the carp swimming in it. As you have been walking past, uh, there's water everywhere. You've been trudging through it. The library is even more of a mess when you first came in. Um, with the, like, There's books and scrolls and bookshelves, reading stands off kilter or knocked over everywhere. As you're walking through, uh, it looks like a hurricane hit. Um, and as you find Alma, Sonoma, and Mouse, uh, both of them are drenched, soaked uh, in water from head to toe. Um, definitely wet bird action here. Um, they look up at you uh, as you return. Michaela, you take, uh, you suffer, let's see, the time I would have taken. Um, suffer eight necrotic damage for the time between them. Human walks up to almost someone Oma and Mouse. <sighs> I'm glad that we found you too. Please, could you help out Michaela? Mm. Don't know what's going on with her. And Schumann puts Michaela on the ground. Okay. <clears throat> As you set her down on top of this glass um, or transparent floor, um, beneath it, crystal blue waters and a pair of uh, carp swimming in circles underneath. Uh, the rim illuminated by runes. Uh, as you set her down, uh, Michaela looks much more uh, gaunt and receded and uh, emaciated. Uh, her condition is worsening rapidly. Um, as the bird looks, as, as the merchant king <laughs> looks at, her, looks upon her, uh, he rolls a medicine check. I think I'm gonna scan her back to the ritual room and to the plan. Scan her back to the ritual room, you said? Yeah. And do what? I couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. Uh, she has a plan, but I'm... Her intention is she's gonna burning hand the last brazier. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Zalia quickly dips back and runs back up the stairs. Um... So we'll, we'll come to you in a moment, because of the time it would take. <laughs> um, the Merchant King studies Michaela for a moment, and you can see a little bit of worry creep into the Raven's eyes. Uh, yes, I should say, uh, indeed, she is definitely... Uh, as you put it, um, no, I don't know too terribly much about, uh, 
well, <laughs> diagnosing, uh, or, or that kind of thing, um, but if it weren't for the fact that she is still breathing, I would, I must pronounce her dead. And judging by your stature and, uh, your, hmm, wear and tear, and on account that you're all bleeding, <laughs> uh, I would say my guess is not too far off. Shuman just looks over at Mouse. Mouse, anything? <laughs> Completely interrupting, you know, almost a Nova. Mouse, like, looks over and uh, looks, at uh, looks at Michaela from her spot. She gets up and, like, does a couple, like, kneeling, squatting steps to look. She checks the pulse. Uh, she comes back in her husky voice. Uh, blood pumps, but... Uh, and she's breathing, but... Gosh, she's so cold. Uh, Mouse, if you've got any potions or antidotes or anything of the sort on your person... Uh, uh, I've... Well, I always keep a... a the, the old potion of magical healing on me. Uh... Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll give it to her. Yeah, right away. Um, so she withdraws a court, um, typical flask-looking thing, a little cone with a long neck, and uh, she pops the court and s swirls it around this to agitate this cherry, vibrant liquid, and uh, splashes a little bit on Michaela's mouth and uh, opens her lips and pours a little bit down. Uh, Michaela, you take one Mika one necrotic damage. Um. Um. Do we have the that journal with us still? Yes. Is it still open? Yes. You were carrying it. Well, unless so unless you closed it. <laughs> Can, can Twig sense like anything magical about it? Um, make an Arcana check. Arcana. Um, you quickly take out the journal, uh, and uh, you don't really sense any magical. This seems like mundane ink. Um mundane writing. Uh, you don't see any arcane signatures. Um, there might be like a bit of uh, wizard's ink used for one of the, the muscle drawings. Uh, very inappropriate. Um, but aside from the passages about dragon shards, there's nothing else here. So we'll try closing the book. Okay. Boop. Close this. Unless <laughs> the Merchant King Alma uh, pipes up. Unless uh, um, <laughs> well, we all know that potions of healing are <laughs> magical, uh, in magically infused liquids. Uh, that drive vital life force back into back into the body, and everyone instantly pops up when uh, upon drinking them, even if they are asleep, uh, knocked unconscious. I'm afraid the only situation uh, that someone would not be receiving of such an influence is when they have perished. Zalia, uh, you run up the oh skitter, uh, skitter up the stairs, and uh, you run over to the last remaining uh, torch, brazier, pyre, mm -hmm. and uh, just introduce a good old burning hands to it. You cup your hands and then shoot forth this thermal energy. <laughs> it uh, lights it for a moment. Um, 
Give me an Arcana check. Okay, lights it for a moment. And then it goes out. It, on its own, it seems that uh, something does not allow is the correct word. Yeah, it does not allow this flame to remain lit. However, the it smolders into this smoke, and the smoke rises, and it begins to form a shape. And the shape is uh, of a flapping bird that flaps away, and where the wind would come from the uh, from the flapping wings, it pushes the smoke down, which roils into a uh, a castle. You see parapets, ramparts. You see an inner gate, and uh, what rises from this uh, from the center of this castle is a huge smoke pot uh, smoke. Um, ring and it begins spiraling upwards, upwards, upwards into the sky and uh, you see stairs curling around it and you see uh, at the very top it forms a, another uh, dome, a cathedral or a gazebo and uh, hanging in there is a small flame that flickers for an instant and then disappears into the smoke and then the whole thing wisps away. Uh, during that moment, Schumann is going to look over to Wig. Wig, I guess we have no choice but to try those potions that you have. Quickly. Twig will lay out the pouches. Um, does it seem like any of them are colored like a dragon shard would be colored? Uh, no. None of them are salmon. Okay. Um, there is a reddish-brown dust. Um, a kind of like a, like a neon green dust. There is a, um, like a cloudy yellow. And then there is a, um, like a like a fairy green or fairy blue, like that kind of a like bioluminescent color. Um, I think Twig would just take a tiny pinch of the blue green one. And... Okay. Put it on his tongue to see if it's not poison. Uh, let's see here. Sure, roll a d100. Is this how much damage I take? Uh, <laughs> instead, <laughs> uh, Twig, as you touch this to your tongue, um, you feel sufficiently buoyant. <laughs> and... Uh, you feel a little, a little bit lighter, um, but it, the effect just lasts for a moment, and then you're you're back to your normal weight again. I don't think it's that one. What about the? He'll do the same to the reddish brown one. Okay, the reddish brown one. Uh, where's? All right. Uh, this one tastes amazing. It is it is the sweetest thing you've ever tasted. Um, it's almost like sudden and overpowering. It's like putting one of those like dipsticks <laughs> in the sugar powder and then sticking it on your tongue, just unprepared, the first thing in the morning. Um, your eyes light up with <laughs> with the taste. Uh, that's it. Well, that, that didn't taste like poison. Uh, Twiggle just put a pinch of that in, in Michaela's mouth. Okay. Nothing happens. For a minute. Uh, but instead, Michaela, you suffer one necrotic damage. <laughs> 
Alma, surely you've seen something of this in, in your library or in your travels? The bird's eyes close. I have seen many people die in my time. Michaela isn't dead. We just need to find out how to save her. How far is it from your infirmary? Hmm? Uh, one, two, uh... A couple holes down, yes. Quick enough that I should run, right? Sure. We'll be back in a couple minutes. If you would be so kind as to lead the way. Oh, are we all going? Sure. Come on this way. Human picks up. Michaela. Be quick. I'm sure we don't have a very long. If I might ask, what is the plan? What are you going to do at the infirmary that you couldn't do here with magical, uh, with with magical healing potions? We can explain as we're going. Do you lead us? If not, then tell me where. All right. Uh, the Merchant King leads you to the infirmary. Uh, there are many bre uh, many, many breads. Uh, there are many beds uh, decked out with bread patterned uh, <laughs> dovets. Bread shaped pillows. Not much poison damage or necrotic damage do I take? In Just that? one. Also, who's holding the Ember Knight right now? Uh, Ember Blade right now? I think Do Juman me. is. Yeah. Okay. But it's like wrapped up so... in a cloak thing. Okay, so he's not attuned to it? Yeah. I see. Okay. You rush in, or uh, with the flapping of wings, you rush in. Juman. I don't have a, an infirmary, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh. Just looks for the nearest counter or nearest person to help him. Mm. Quickly tries to explain the situation. They're looking for like any help, or at least like anyone that can help find out the issue with Michaela. Okay. Uh, the person in the infirmary looks around. Uh, so yes, yes, so it's, it's a setter here. Um, I have one investigate. There's a couple of tense moments uh, where they're checking the, uh, the vitals and and other such things. Michaela suffers one necrotic damage during the process. Um, You can see, uh, you you can you can see, and also you were told by the uh, the nurse working in the infirmary that uh, they are uh, very emaciated by this point. Um, our eyes are completely sunken in. Um, breathing starting to become like a little wheezy. Uh, that they find out by doing the um, the stethoscope. And, uh, but blood pumps, uh, they, uh, she has a great pulse, but still very cold, very clammy. Uh, they're not sure. Truman, try giving her the Ember Blade back. Maybe she just needs to hold it? I suppose there's not much else I can think of at this point. And Juman holds the blade portion that's still wrapped in cloth and unwraps the hilt. And then uh, 
close, puts it in Michaela's hand and closes her hand. Hmm. Michaela, roll me. Uh, do a blind GM roll of just a 1d20. Okay. Okay. Uh, you suffer one necrotic damage. Was there any difference? Any Doesn't seem to be. Uh. Michaela, do another one, uh, and also 1d100. Or sorry, not, not, not also, but like instead of 1d20, roll me a 1d100. I guess in a frantic moment, like Chuman's not thinking about too many other people. Probably looks at Michaela and tries to at least get an idea of what might be happening to her. Okay, roll medicine. You're in in your frantic pursuit of trying to decipher what's going on. This this unknown ailment that has afflicted your companion. Uh, your your mind's racing from one thing to another. Your uh, your evaluation of her symptoms uh, might be conflating with other symptoms that she doesn't even have. So and like you're going through. Uh, various sicknesses that you've uh, both had or encountered in your travels um, and it's kind of all mashing together and it's blurring your um, your thought process you're not sure what's going on What's Zelia up to? Uh, um, probably guttering back to the group after that and just reporting that what happened. It's not like the ritual's incomplete as far as something. Uh, but I don't know how she communicate that. She just kind of wail at it. I think <laughs> minor illusion. The exact situation. Uh, what happened. You get the idea across. Uh, your companions have spent enough time with you that, uh, in addition to the minor illusion, and it able to uh, produce both sound and audio at the same time, and also with your uh, gestures and interpretation, uh, yeah, they they get the idea. And uh, then just, I know, patting Michaela on the head. I take one bludgeoning damage. No. <laughs> <laughs> How many pets? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Celia's hand goes into five hands on each finger. Mm. So, uh, what do we do? Do we just watch her die like this? Human's not even, he's just trying everything. <laughs> you guys watch as Tuman frantically uh, moves his hand down his arm and infuses it. Like there's little faint motes of green energy glittering off his arm as he places his hand uh, daintily on, or <laughs> force firmly, but daintily, or like gently uh, on, on Michaela's form trying to infuse uh, this healing energy. Unfortunately, it does not take. Kelly, you take one more uh, necrotic damage.
Do you remember when Feather got the reaction that she did? Is that something we could do here? Wait, who is that question re referring to? Just the, all of our companions. They got oh. the rest of you. I don't know at this point. I, with whatever we haven't tried, I'm willing to give it to go. Well, it certainly could hurt to try, but I don't have any better ideas. Kill you take one necrotic damage. She's, um, Michaela still has, like, the Ember Blade in her hand, right? Correct. I think Twig will, like, pick up the handle with his cloak. And I guess try to, like, like, put the blade in Michaela's hand just to, like, put a small cut, but doing as little damage as possible. Like, just enough to have the blade, like, technically cut her. Uh, Michaela, you take one slashing damage. <laughs> Michaela bleeds. Uh, Quick, get the leeches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michaela does bleed. Um, this open cut now on her on her hand. Um, the nurse instinctively goes and dabs some some uh, bandages or like a clean cloth on it. Um, As Tumen tries to, like, he tries to calm down and then take another look at Michaela to find out what might be the case, or at least narrow it down. Nothing else happens with the blade, right? No, unfortunately. Okay. Another medicine check? Yeah, medicine check. Um, your. Uh, you're still running through the the symptoms. You're not sure what's going on. Michaela, you've tried everything. You've tried your cure your wounds. You've tried your potion of healing. Um, you, uh, you've you tried this weird uh, powder that Twig found on, on Brian's person. Nothing's working. You're not sure. Um, the only thing that comes to mind... Uh, that that was different. That gave any kind of shred of hope, um, or like shred of uniqueness, was when um, Zelia held the uh, dragon shard near. Uh, it, it made a flash, but I mean, dragon shards flash all the time, especially when they're conducting lightning. Uh, as you would know from <laughs> from Zelia giving everybody a good jolt every once in a while. It's time to fucking <laughs> vapor. <laughs> Frankenstein, um, this bitch. <laughs> the you you've interacted with several uh, expired individuals. This is very similar, but the strange thing is that her blood still pumps, and she still breathes. After a deep breath from Chuman, he looks over to the nurse. <laughs> nurse, do you have any antidotes? Uh, for for just regular poison, like 
someone yes. or or uh, the all the, the the stomach ache. Uh, we have several thing. We have s several curatives. Uh, what sort of antidote? Poison. Uh, y yes, I have one right here. Could you try that? Sure. Uh, one moment. Let me let me get it and fix it up. Uh, so the nurse fusses with this little vial. Um, it is a deep sea blue liquid. Um, they swirl it up and then they put it into a tablespoon and gently uh, spoon a little bit into Michaela's mouth. Uh, rub the esophagus a little bit to make sure it goes down. Does anything happen? Uh, not outwardly. Does it look like her state has changed at all? Uh, the the nurse looks at you, Tuman, uh, and answers your the the question on your mind. Well, it it it, it takes, <laughs> as with any ingested. Um, Curative, it, it may take a moment. Michaela, you suffer one necrotic damage. I can refrain. <laughs> As... When I'm long dead, Michaela will be suffering one necrotic damage. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone frets and panics over over Michaela's station. Everyone hovering over, trying to rack their brains of what could what what could have happened. What could what could you do to reverse this, Michaela? In the swirl of darkness, you float on your back looking up into more abyss you can feel that you are nearing the end of your mortal coil oh she's felt that for a long time ever closer <laughs> closer still mm-hmm <laughs> There uh you're f you hear the heavy sound of flapping wings and behind it you hear a strong voice. And it calls out to you and says Nashir Am I able to respond? If you wish Um If I I would like try I guess to turn to the voice if I can in this void uh, and try and see what it's calling to me. The as you contort your body, you're not able to uh, see even your nose in front of your face. You bring up your hand; it mm -hmm. is also just complete darkness. Mm -hmm. It's as if you're blind. Mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. gaze into the abyss. And uh, yeah. you are not able to visually confirm anything. Yeah, so Mikhail would, would say, Who, "Who's there? What is what is happening? Where am I? Where is everyone else?" Uh, 
the voice replies they do not matter they are unimportant only life is important only life matters answer me this in your long nesheer life have you learned all about it. About, about what? This voice comes back at you immediately booming all around you. Why do people cling to life when they know they cannot live forever? Kayla. Oh, I guess in the void, just would sort of say, I. I. Not know. I have. I have never. No, never understood that question. It is why I became so drawn to Ayid and the teachings of the Nashir to try and understand, and I never could. Everlasting life is not the blessing most believe it to be. You suffer one necrotic damage. I'm at zero hit points. Everyone around the bed notice a slight shift, a twitch, in Michaela's uh, eyes. Uh, she seems to be um, in that part of sleep where your eyes start twitching rapidly. There's a, a twitch in her cheek. Kayla, roll me a d20. Okay. D9. Annoying. I don't suppose this is the kind of d20 I could react to. No, unfortunately not. Twig is like getting like like he's starting to hyperventilate a little and he's like getting visibly panicked. He's like digging through his bag, but like all the things he pulls out, there's nothing like there's nothing helpful. Um 
Michaela, uh, the voice responds to you. And uh, asks you with so many things to do in such a short time. How can feeble, short life be justified? Don't you want to live forever? No. No, if anything. I'm so, so tired of living. The world has... I have lost everyone I have known and loved and cherished. The world has outgrown me. I am vestigial. But I have yeah. seen others do miracles in lives but a fraction of a fraction of mine. I have never understood any of this. There are those who will mourn you, just as you have seen and mourned your loved ones. Justify this. Justify m mourning? Remembering ones you've lost? What even needs to be justified? You hold on to those who you can no longer see again so that they stay with you for as long as you can take them. Human turns around, steps away from the table, not wanting to acknowledge what is it, what's about to become. Ye must desire respite from thine empty existence. I shall grant it but not freely. Go to my chamber, and perhaps you might realize what this was all for, Nashir. The voice seems to leave you like the presence disappears and instead you feel constrained restricted trapped your eyes open and you see your companions all looking down at you with worrisome faces that for Chuman. Chuman has turned around. And Thalia's gonna like just kind of grab face. Oh shit, she's awake. <laughs> sort of deal. You're at one HP. Oh. 
As he uh, just sort of stares, wide-eyed but wordless. Um, Michaela like, like croaks out, the like, throat kind of burning from the uh, toxin that she inhaled. Um, <laughs> what? What happened? Uh, no one seems quite certain. Uh, for a moment there, I thought you had died. Uh, it's I... good to hear your voice. I think I might have. Perhaps she looks down and sees that she is like you put the ember blade in her hands, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. She looked down and like see she is clutching it. Um, I think <laughs> the. Phoenix. Well, I think it spared me. There was the the book, some kind of some kind of trap, just like <laughs> with the young Orion, back in the mines. Rigged to poison. Where am I? Looks around. <laughs> uh, we are still in the library. Uh, we managed to get you to the infirmary, though there weren't much help. How, how long has it been? Not terribly long. Uh, certainly not a short time. A few minutes. <sighs> I see. <laughs> uh, you... <laughs> You had us terribly worried, you know. <sighs> A soft smile. Huh? It was on her face. Um... <sighs> it would seem the worst of it is over. Thank you. For... And he, keeping me for, for making sure I didn't die in the library, but <laughs> perhaps <laughs> next time. We try and find someone who knows a lesser or greater restoration spells. Those tend to help specifically against poisons. And then she just kind of like lays back into, like she's on to like a bed, right? Yes. Okay, just lays like into the pillow and just kind of like looks up. I think I'm okay now though. Thank you for your concern. But, uh, I think I could use some sleep. I'm sure we all could. Just 
Please, don't scare us like that again. Alma flops over I... and lands on your chest and like poke, like mm -hmm. pecks you in the forehead. Yes, that was terrifying. Well, I promise to fall at least one more time. Come on. Uh, what? What does that mean? No, you are forbidden like from it. And it means I'm not dying now. Good. Great. Continue that one. That's part of your curriculum. Well, <laughs> I'd say you all really put the elbow grease to use up there. Did... I, I assume... they explained to you what happened? Uh, no. <laughs> not yet, actually. Um, uh, they, they brought you to me, and uh, you looked dead, so I pronounced you dead. I can't tell you how happy I am to walk back that statement. So that's uh, so. What did happen? Uh, that's it then. Uh, you're returning in the shape that you are. You saved cores there from impending doom then? Well done, congratulations are in order, perhaps? Okay, that has a pretty somber face. Um... I don't know if it was doom, perhaps, but... The student feather. Well, she was trying to take on the phoenix's power for itself. Sorry, for herself. The raven we turns into a, a bird orb. She what? <laughs> she ignited the the basin and. Plunges the amber blade deep within herself. She just said she wanted to fly. Uh, the fool. I'm afraid this is going to go on her permanent record. Fool marks, um, take it away. Nope. That... Afra I'm afraid... Well, she is dead. Oh. Yes. It was kill that we killed. Likewise with a colleague of hers, uh, Vrayan. Alright, well... I'll make a mental note, mental note to strike their names from the registry. See if I can find any next of kin to notify. Hmm. But <sighs> the fire is lit in the ember blade. Soaked in its flames. All that now remains is the one within the phoenix's roost at the heart of Cyril. Hmm. 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 Well. And you're all going. That is the plan, yes. Have you worked out how to get there? Do you plan to walk? 
The journey could take you longer than imagined. Are you in a rush? Across the dunes are many terrestrial dangers. Wanderers, for one. If uh, you are offering assistance... <sighs> sooner would be better. Make a persuasion check. <laughs> Azalea is going to <laughs> minor illusion around Almuth, the wind of the flying machine going through the air. With an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? Uh, 14. Okay. Well. Oh. Yeah, that comes in. <laughs> Theoretically, there was something we went in one of the other locations of, of the fires of a path opening once they were all lit. Hmm. Well, hang on a second. I agreed to allow you to trapes about the Grand Archive. I don't really recall saying anything about going on a field trip with you. Oh, but... Thalia intensifies the minor illusion of wind and sky soaring past. Think about all the lost and forgotten knowledge just sitting, waiting to be found within Seril. What sort of way to continue our education? <laughs> Persuasion mm -hmm. check with advantage. <laughs> A 26. <laughs> You're saying. Mm. Mm. No. You cannot entice me. I have no plan to Thalia. go to, to Cyril. Thalia starts giving scratches. No? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, but don't stop doing that. Well. We have to... Should probably converse with... Uh, the Lady Zosare. Make your persuasion uh, check with advantage real quick. Who? Is that or Michaela? Uh, Michaela. Okay. Uh, aided by Zalia, but yeah. Okay. Uh, an 18. Alright, he interrupts you as soon as you say mm -hmm. Zosare's name. Oh, no, 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 she doesn't need to bring into bring any part into this. She can be fine in her in her in, in her home. She is why. Well, part of why we're doing this. <sighs> she sent us here, you know. Oh yes, I'm very aware of that. Let's 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 How long did you say you've known her? Listen, I will help you, <laughs> but you should be glad for my help. You need it, in fact. But I'm only trying to prevent my newest star pupil's expiration, because I assume you'll be taking her with you. Ah, so yes. Well, that is on her to decide. If you could fly in. Yeah, I'll give you a thumbs up. If you could fly, yes. The, the desert worms could not come out of the ground and decide our tasty morsel. A roaring earthquake could not gobble you up. Hmm. Yes. Yes. It'd be faster. If you could fly, it would be faster. We'll have to. We'll have to make a flying machine. Another one! A better one! Yes! Yes, we can certainly build another Thopter! How... how long would that take? But... Is... is the one that he landed here in a salvageable shape? Well, I'm not sure. Did you destroy it? I left to catalog no. my findings right away. I assumed that you would... You didn't, well, did we, you? We left the crew to... to well, help the crew where we could, but, you know... To do. Oh no. Okay, it will be at least a day to recruit help. Another one if we, if the original team has flown the coop, which I'm sure you let them do. Uh, it'll take a few weeks perhaps, may maybe less if the foreman can at least be recruited again. Uh, building, additions, 
amenities? Hmm. Yes. It will take around the same amount of time. Or longer, because we now lack the people when I had the people. Uh, sure, yes, it, I'll help you. I will build you another ship. You better be grateful. The great merchant king, Alma Sonoma, that's me, has decided to help you once again and let you on a flying machine of his engineering. We are <laughs> eternally grateful. Hmm. Your grace. Yes. We will make sure to inform Lady Cesare of your uh, incredible generosity and helpfulness in this matter. Mm, yes, also, also use the word invaluable. Mm -hmm. You must, you, you must, you have to make it clear that you couldn't do it without me. Mm -hmm. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Well, Zelia, I expect you back here. Your curriculum starts soon. You don't want to be late for your first day. Zelia nods, has knowingly. Well, I'll begin the draft. Uh, indeed, it will be a few weeks, uh, and then we'll get you there right away. Lickety split as quick as the raven flies. Yes. Mm. At least see if you can find some of the crew. The foreman most is the most valuable, but anyone else is fine. Do I have their names? Uh. Did I write their names? I didn't commit them to memory. It didn't seem important. Just to clarify, uh, did no one on your previous crew want to be there? They all showed up and started talking about ships, so I could, so I drafted them. Something about they lost one uh, over in Tenuto, and they all had to escape a tsunami or something. Uh, but. Huh. Uh, some, some, some. They mentioned something about they were victims of a raid. Uh, they apparently were, were a group, uh, and then they got beat up, and then they had to had to leave the Marauders. Uh, so I found the goodness within my heart to give them a job, building my flying machine. They seem a little rough and tumble, but you know how those types are. Right? <laughs> well, I can't say I've personally ever interacted with a group quite like that, but I can imagine. Well, I'll get started. Uh, you all should rest up. You look like hell. At least one of them, anyway. <laughs> right? Because there's several. You get it. Ha! It will come to you in a moment, and then you'll then you'll laugh. You'll have a right to knee slap and say, "Oh, that marching king, Alma Sonoma." <laughs> All right. Well, go get me the <laughs> foreman, and I'll start drafting, and perhaps I'll make it a festival for school and offer extra credit. Yes. The foreman was that uh, was that red dragonborn fellow. Uh, he offered ah. most of his services. <laughs> There's a glint in Twig's eye. I so I'm not fully. When did you all beat this man? <laughs> he is an old friend. Oh, you know him then. Excellent. Persuade him efficiently. I'm sure we'll manage. Wouldn't be our first time. <laughs> well then. Waiting him. <laughs> well then. Michaela, are you feeling alright? 
I'm feeling fine. Well enough. I think. And the rest of you? Alive? Healthy? Hale? Whole? Alive, certainly. Mostly, to all of those questions. Alright, well. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you for the next maiden voyage. Oh, we'll have to name the ship, too. Hmm. I wonder if I can put out a batter box and the raven starts, like, hopping out of the room. Mouse looks at you and shrugs. Are you fair, Mouse? I'm alright. Uh, I dare say it. Uh, I was gonna say it better than you, but then it sounded kind of mean to say it. So, I, <laughs> but, but then I, but then I just said it, didn't I? Oh, I'm sorry, Michaela. You gave us quite a fright. I appreciate all the concern. Where are you going? <sighs> to the very heart of Cyril, I think. Is it hey, dangerous? I'm gonna, yeah, re redraw the, by the way, the book image. Kind of point at it. You're going there? She points. Yep. The heart of the morning and... Potentially... Source of... Curse of Wandering itself. I come? No, I'm gonna die and get eat get eaten by something if I go. Take lots of notes for me, okay? Let's try. And pictures. Draw me pictures. And and if you have any if, if there's any weird slabs that have language you can't read on it, or even ones you can read, just bring it back to me. Um I'd I'd like cornerstones of any buildings you find and she just rattles off all these things well, that she wants you to bring back and to get an interrupter at some point it's a, if if we are successful then perhaps we might not have to bring you back anything it might simply be safe enough or at least start becoming safe enough people to actually return to. Alright. Well. I was doing... I was trying to find uh, some kind of research on Cyril and the Ember Knight and all that uh, anyway, so I'm gonna... Oh, it feels weird to leave you right after you just got back up, but... I don't know, you seem fine. <laughs> <laughs> I will be fine. All right. I well. just need rest. Maybe something good to eat too. All right. Well, if you need me, I'll be in the books. And Mouse wanders out. Gives you all the thumbs up. I'm like walking backwards, finger guns. <laughs> you are. Now by yourselves. Pastiche is going to take a look around the infirmary. <laughs> look for any open beds. Yeah, there's several. <laughs> Plop down in one, call over to the nurse. Uh, is it alright if we uh, stay a while? nurse looks at you all battered, bruised still on fire charred they just close the the little divider shade <laughs> wordlessly <laughs> I 
Kayla, please don't scare us like that again. <laughs> I'll try to be more cautious when opening books. Going forward. You could ask me. I I have a thing for that. <laughs> a, a thing? Like, for... Flourishes bookmark. Oh. <laughs> Sure. No, and I'll let you touch the things first, then, Tyke. Deal. <laughs> well, I suppose all of us are in due rest, or in, in need for rest. I think I'm going to be like Pastiche and take one of the beds. And then walks over and gets into one of the infirmary beds. Okay. Yeah, everybody can uh everybody can take their rest and we'll begin uh the downtime. Uh, everybody can hit their long rest button. Um, let's see here. So, someone's going to need to go find that red dragonborn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to let you know, because nobody else will. <laughs> um, or you can, or you cannot. You don't have to go get him. <laughs> just forget about him. You can just forget about him. It's up to it's up to you. I don't control anything. Um, I the speed at which you find <laughs> um, everybody go ahead and uh, everybody roll a d20 we'll do it in order we'll do some downtime in order uh, after a lovely near death scenario from mm -hmm. from poison <laughs> alright so it's uh, Juman Pasish, Azalea, Michaela, Twig. Um, Juman, what would you like to do? You went out to, uh, you sent me a thing, but, uh, yeah. So you're, what are you up to, Juman, in these several weeks? Um, I'll say several, but it's, yeah, it, it'll say several weeks. Right. It, it, it'll get sped up depending on what you guys do. <laughs> of course. Um, I think at least to preface it before I start it, uh, Chuman will probably like leave early before anybody else is awake or looking around. Um, it's kind of walking around town, um, going between the uh, library and then looking for someone to uh, get some training with. Um, it's like after a couple, maybe about two days or so, he's kind of really, he's kind of realized that his, he's lacking in strength when it comes to uh, fights with, that's outside of his element. So he figures that he's trying to get some actual adequate training to survive is the best way to put it. Uh, same way that he does it when he's underground. Um... In between that, um... yeah, you you, uh, you do somehow inexplicably you run into this crotchety goblin again. Uh, she's got this staff with things and like fetishes dangling off of it, and she she sees you in size, says, "Oh, it's the cardboard face again." What do you want, you cheer siphoning convict? It's always a pleasure to hear your insults. I see that you are doing well. What are you doing here in Dorlust? <clears throat> Trying to make sure my investment doesn't go to waste. 
Why don't you eat something, you bean pole? I pick things out of my teeth that are bigger than you. <sighs> Jimmy kind of rolls his eyes for a moment. Well, if it would suit you any better, manage to have a very close battle. One that has been uh, on my mind for quite a while. Are you in? T you have time to teach. I'll teach. My other project never asked me. Sure, I'm happy to teach. You look like you need something. You, you couldn't track a giraffe in snow. Yeah, let's 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 go and learn something. All right, lead the way then. All right, yeah, and you guys do a training montage full of uh, the Goblin Creole heaping just heinous insult upon heinous insult on you. <laughs> um, in between the training, uh, I know you will probably also be going to the library, um, <laughs> trying to find any information that you can regarding... Uh, Three different things. Obviously, the Phoenix, his mark, uh, and uh, about the administrator. Okay. Uh, trying to find any information that like might connect the three. Okay. Uh, slide me a couple investigation rolls. Two, please. Um, and then I'll write them down and I'll get that information to you. All right. Uh, after. Cool. Dude, my investigation rules are crazy right now. <laughs> I guess he does this, like... Like, he, he's doing this, like, constantly. So, in the daytime, he's doing training. And then, like, a portion of the night, maybe halfway in the night, he's at the library. Okay. Um. Um, let's see here. Where are my downtime activities? Uh, okay. Let's see. Where is it? I had it earlier. Lore. Uh, Alright, continue. Anything else? Um. I believe there is one point where he does go to Oma Sonoma um, to see about learning any magic or at least something that he can use um, which then leads to human learning a vortex warp Real sick. similar to uh, the wildfire spirits teleportation um I haven't picked out a specific time frame when this happens, but I think uh, probably like about halfway or towards the end. Um, there's a point of I, I, there's a point of frustration with the training and Chuman uh, at like one late night um, thinks about the flame of rebirth, or at least the soul. Um, and decides to try and use it to, in order to help him get stronger. Um. Yeah. You come out looking like one of Feather's drawings. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Then, yeah, outside of that, probably continue the rest of the training. Um, probably talking to Oma Sonoma since he's the only one or he's probably the only one he feels like he could talk to at least about um his homeland mm -hmm. and ask about the phoenix mark the relation to phoenix and ask about the administrator as well okay make a regular intelligence check with um yeah regular intelligence check I'm gonna modify the bonus a little bit, but I've got it in my head. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> 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 yep. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll get that to you after um, after the session throughout the week. Um, okay. On on the lore. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, you were wanting to get a get an item, I thought. Oh. Uh. I was gonna do that later, but I can do that now. Um. Okay. Uh. Well. I mean, we can, whatever you can do it now, you can do it later. You can do it a little later. Okay. Uh. Cool. So this this happens. Um. As a bonus. As a bonus insult, uh, we got, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see, as you, as you put more effort into trying to become stronger and bulk yourself up, she, uh, it, she gives you a particularly stinging one, which causes you to, like, try that much more hunter. Uh, she calls you a disintegrating stretch Armstrong doll. What the fuck does that <laughs> mean? You don't even know. It's a goblin thing. <laughs> uh, will probably look at be like, conf like a mixture of bewilderment and confusion. <laughs> he has no idea what that even means. Right. Goblins. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Pastiche. Oh. Well, first thing Pastiche would do is grab Twig and start looking for our good friend. Twig is absolutely down for this. Okay. <laughs> um, well, we'll resolve that last. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after whatever goes on with that, uh, they're going to spend some time Conducting some research on this strange wand they've collected. Okay. Uh, roll. Just looking around town for anyone who might have any sort of expertise. Seeing if they can figure out how it works. Okay. Uh, roll persuasion. Okay. It's, this will represent asking around town, uh, asking around Zozo Academy, and seeing which college student wants to teach you about guns. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there are some fucking college students. <laughs> uh, you you find one such college student. Um, they have um, wild red hair, like re like brown red hair. Um, They always have a pair of goggles on, but they're like smoked, <laughs> and their face is com just complete blackened with soot. They've got like dirty fingers. They have like five wands in their belt. On their arm is like some kind of weird van brace or gauntlet that has slots in it. That hold that hold and like secure wands. When you find them, you see them like blasting things from it, like an arm blaster, like a like friggin' Mega Man. Uh, what's the objectives? <laughs> uh, see if they know anything about this this wand. Okay. Anything about the inner workings? See if they can maybe help me retool it to fire something other than dragon shards. Okay. Um, this. Uh, the deal closer uh, between you. Oh, roll Arcana. Yeah, sure. With advantage. There it is. Strong. Solid 27. Yeah, okay. Between you and this wand person <laughs> this wand enthu between you and this enthusiast um, you manage to find out that this strange wand uh, is more device and less magic but it does use magical ammunition um, it currently has dragon shards loaded into it but uh, you figure out that any kind of crystal will do um, okay 
and what happens is it sends a uh, it sends a a magical pulse through the crystal, which uh, bends and refracts through the arcane weave inside the chamber, and then it shoots forward a an, um, a projectile of energy. Um, and you get to you you, you figure out that uh, depending on the kind of crystal. Um, and like what origins it had, uh, the sediment it was found in, the deposits it was found in, um, and the crystal's inherent um, magical abilities from superstition. <laughs> uh, you can produce different energy types as long as you manage to find and cut specific crystals to the specifications. Uh, it is easily color coded. <laughs> Uh, after dealing with that, thanking this enthusiastic student, we'll just spend some time around town shopping, uh, absolutely stocking up on healing potions. Put a maybe see if they can put a wand, find anyone selling some crystals. Put a wand sheath in your inventory as a parting gift from uh, from the from the. The wand enthusiast. Uh, it is just like their bracer, uh, where you can like shove wands in it and have access to them without having to <laughs> change. Yeah. Okay. They they give it to you because they have made a friend. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And then the potions you can buy them easily enough. You're in Magic Town. Just uh, deduct the appropriate amount. They are the regular Correct. price. <clears throat> um, are you looking for regular ones or any like super like 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 pumping ones? Uh, nothing super special. Just potions to have okay. instead of not having them. Okay. Uh, regular potions of healing or greater or supreme. Uh, you know whatever they can find. Okay. Um. You can find, let's see, in stock, in on on the campus, uh, there are five regular potions of healing and two greater potions of healing available. Okay. You might be able to scrounge up more during your downtime, but it would be, um, you would need to focus on it. Yeah. Jimin, roll me a d6. Sorry, three d three d sixes. <clears throat> uh, but continue pastiche. Um, I think they'll probably just spend the rest of their time uh, trying to implement some of the new arts they've learned into their magic. Okay. Radical. Radical, radical, radical. Uh, Take some of those dancing lessons and implement them into a few new spells. Let's see. Zalia. Hello. What would Zalia be? Like? A menace. A menace? Oh no. Or oh yes. <laughs> um. I don't know if she has any particular goal in mind, but she's going to spend her time just kind of crawling, swimming, flying all over the place, crashing classes, taking a notes in her own very idiosyncratic, nearly impenetrable to anyone else way. Just having a good time. Okay. Um. Make a. Make me a charisma check. Hi. Okay. The rest of the group, uh, rumors begin going around the college campus of uh, some entity <laughs> running around town. Uh, it comes in various forms, most of them tentacled. Mm -hmm. 
people start standing on top of roofs with binoculars trying to find uh tr trying to catch sight of this of this legendary creature uh Zalia, i think uh someone shouts at you eventually and um there's probably like a scooby doo like a, a quick scooby doo chase scene of like a, a group of researchers trying to haul you away for research thinking that you're it or not understanding that <laughs> uh, who you are at first. He's gonna play into it. She's gonna run and also like use major like major image to make duplicates of herself that are running in different directions. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. If you want uh, that, that's yeah, that's actually perfect. If you want anything to like come about from that, let me know. It happens. <laughs> I will have to think. Remind me to think about that later because I don't have brain power right now. Sure. Um, let's see who's next. Michaela is next. Diane. Diane. Michaela, you're muted. Oh no. He got eated. Sorry. Oh. Was getting ready for work. Um, I was listening to all that just on my phone. Uh, what would you yeah. like to do, Michaela? I mean, Michaela would. Um, I guess. Uh, I mean, spend sort of the initial couple days, uh, just like in, I guess, like infirmary, just like recovering, uh, and then eventually would just. <laughs> We just kind of like get up and leave <laughs> without like actually like, letting them know. Um, and um, would probably like let the like, party know uh, that she wants to make a quick um, trip to. Uh, well, to, to Durlusk and, uh, or sorry, Luxnox, I mean, uh, to Luxnox, and then more specific, well, yeah, she'd say she'd be making the trip to Luxnox, um, to inform Lady Sozero of, like, you know, what's happened, and what's going to happen, uh, as well as say, like, I still need, I still need to make sure Elena is that she actually leaves this blasted pyramid. Um, I don't intend to fight anything. It should just be a, a quick travel. So I should be fine on my own. Um, of course, anyone could still join if they wanted, I guess. <laughs> she wouldn't stop you. Bailey is busy being a menace. Mm -hmm. Uh, and yeah, she would uh, make out for, um, well, I guess first. I can't believe he's, Michaela's making out. <laughs> yeah. old, we're getting old woman, Yuri. Sloppy style with tongue. Uh, no, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so she, I guess we would first have to, like, you know, I mean, how, how long would it take? It would be, uh, it, it would like be a like a week oh. to get to Luxnox, and it would be, uh, I think the journey to the pyramid is another day. Um, how long via flight? Because yeah. it took us a day with a with a significantly pretty or less than a day with a pretty impressive ship. But what if Michaela were to uh, cast? Conjure animal, and choose uh, one creature of uh, 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 eight, uh, what is it? Challenge rating of the big one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Uh, two or lower, and in that uh, includes, in fact, um, a giant. Uh, 
literally, a, I think, a giant vulture. And the art of that, like, from the monster manual, literally has a person riding it. So. Hmm. All right, all right. Um, has a fly speed of, of 60. Uh, yeah. Uh, which she'd be able to, like, do in, like, effectively two out. Well, she'd fly for an hour, have to land, resummon it, and then fly for another hour. Uh, and can do that twice uh, in a day. Um, but I would imagine that'd still be faster mm -hmm. than simply. Uh, yeah, you're not exerting just... your own effort. Um, and, yeah, I mean, uh, she could like march in between those like flight yeah. times. Like she could still be moving. So you're so you're on foot, no raptor, but you're you're basically taking a hang glider at <laughs> a couple yeah. hours. Okay. Like to avoid like the roughest terrain. So sure. Does this mean I don't get to shoot you out of a catapult? No, Michaela would still like <laughs> go up to them, like at the the whaling gorge, would uh, go up to them and say like, "Okay, yeah, yeah." yeah. So after I, I want you to like shoot me off this catapult and like use it to like you know as a a launcher, like to launch the, the raptor <laughs> with like extra speed. Sure. <laughs> like while she's like being launched, would summon it like under her. Takes five days to get to the Laughing Gorge. Uh, the bridge is still broken, and the statue in the mm -hmm. middle of the bridge is still cracked. Um, mm -hmm. When you come up, like they they're having a the, the two dudes are just having a conversation. They're like, "So there I was. This bloke mm -hmm. jumps out at me like I'm serving two for one at his favorite. Oh, whatever. Here, good day, Mar." <laughs> and like he. <laughs> uh, sorry, go ahead. I like yeah. I like wouldn't really even like talk to them. I just like walk past them, climb up into the catapult, and just, like, launch her to the other side. You sit down on, like, the little bowl platform thing. Yeah. Um, you see to the right, there's, like, a, a sign that reads, Safety. Minor injury possible. Never aim the catapult at anyone, and keep your hands and fingers clear of the moving catapult when launching the... Sorry, <laughs> the moving catapult arm when launching the catapult. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you... Um... The attendants uh, assist you, and the counterweight releases, and the throwing arm lifts. This feeling of weightlessness is replaced quickly by hurling you up and forward, tumbling, mm -hmm. and like you're careening through the air, up and over the crevice. The only thing below you is an infinite drop. Uh, there's a mm -hmm. massive cushion you can see on the other side. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> while she's like in the air... Uh, she would cast uh, conjure animals, create the bird beneath her, and just keep flying. Um, sort of swoop, like swoop down close to the ground and then swoop back up into the air. Sick. And be on her way. All right. Uh, you uh, actually find out that. Uh, Ms. Moonstrider is in Luxnox. Oh, she, she actually, she actually did leave. You sent her a message. Good. Uh, uh, Michaela is incredibly relieved <laughs> um, upon seeing that. Um, I'd say like, oh, so I take it you received the bird I sent you. I, I did. Thoughtful of you to let me know that you were safe. <laughs> I never saw you come out, so I suppose without that, I w would have assumed you just were stuck inside, and perished. But you that's did. Exactly why I sent the bird, because I knew that's exactly what you would think. Oh, I, you're always thinking of me. Yes. I was, uh, I was preparing to head back to Tenudo and the Moonlight Shepherds. Huh. It is. Good to see you, perhaps in better spirits. Well, you got out there and... <laughs> you, 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 yeah. <laughs> Are you? And she, you know, very seriously, very, like, friendly. She's like, Are you okay? She nods and touches your arm. Yeah, of course I'm fine. I'm fine. You, you got out there. Uh, you went up in the pyramid and... Knocked it down and sent me that that nice, lovely message, and I 
Really? I mean, I, I, I agreed with you. I didn't need to be there anymore. <laughs> also, the, the front entrance is kind of collapsed. I don't think anybody can get in anyway. Okay, that's good. Uh, Michaela would actually like proceed to properly explain what happened in the pyramid, and then why she uh, wasn't wasn't able to like, you know, why they didn't walk out of it. That they were teleported away. That uh, this has been a very um, a, a sequence of things that had to happen, uh, and couldn't take a time to just, you know, say that we were okay beyond the message. Um, but uh, well, if you plan to continue on with the Moonlight Shepherds, then I suppose I won't stop you. Uh, I was honestly on my way. Well, multiple reasons, but in truth, I mainly just wanted to make sure that you weren't still stuck running away with that pyramid. Oh, the idea of you way. sitting there Give me just... a chance to practice my aim at least. Had you eaten anything other than conjured? What did you call it, poutine? Are you trying to make fun of my generously and delicately prepared? No, I didn't eat anything else. I've had a good sandwich since I got back, though. Good, good. You never did like my create my created magical food. It's good for you. I don't believe that. It's delicious. It... It's so nutritious. It'll keep you going for an entire day or longer. I think, if anything, it takes days off of your life. I think you just need to try it. No, oh, agree to disagree. Mm. But... Watch, watch you don't find yourself eating cre some create food when you come over for dinner next. Mm. I won't even tell you. I'll trick you and just smile. <laughs> no, trust me, I'll know. Hmm. Um. You're going somewhere, aren't you? <sighs> yes. To Cyril. Or eventually we'll make our way there via another one of uh, um, Alma Sonoma's airships, I believe is the plan. I. When I requested that we meet in Tenudo during the Tesha, I... I was going to request, actually, that... You help me go to Cyril. But... I did not ever... Well, it... I've used a lot of... Different reasons and, and some noble excuses for why I wanted this, but... It, in truth, I wanted to go to Cyril because I know, I, I feel it, that I don't have that much more left to live. I, I feel it when I wake up in the morning and from, from sleep, my body needs more every day, and, or even when I, at night, so, when I used to be able to simply see through the dark as clear, clear as day. And even on the very magics I, I can wield, it's, I've, I've long since lost connection to those that, well, even an infant, even an infant elf feels a kinship with at birth. So I wanted to make a request of you, uh, to take me somewhere that I, well, somewhere that I wanted to die at. Hmm. I wanted to not necessarily end my life there, but have my life end 
and Zero. You're saying you need my a parents, guide? the place my son promised he would take me. I think. I don't know. I do not think I will be returning. Zero is what I'm trying to set, get at. So. You're saying you need a guide? For, uh, yes. I am. Well. <clears throat> um, Moonlight Shepherds, uh, your stature go great ways to help us. As well as, I simply want a friend nearby. An old friend nearby there, if it happens. Well. I can understand all that you're saying about, well, <laughs> getting on in the years, but... I figured you would. I'll, I'll take you there. I'll be the, I'll be the light at the, on the, on the front of the ship. She jiggles her little lantern that she has with us. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll... Don't worry, I'll I'll take us down on the path of light. But could it be that just all that heaviness is just from not being around your friend all this time myself? Come on, let's let's go tackle Cyril like like it was the old days. Just a couple of old, hyper-competent old ladies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that was... That was my original plan, if you could call it one. Well, maybe this is just a... <sighs> I'm wise enough to perhaps realize that maybe this is just the human in me talking, but given the choice of living or dying, I think I'd try to live, but... Hmm. We'll see what... We'll, we'll see what the light shines out. What what old selenite tells us, huh? I suppose that we shall. He gives you a hug. Hugs back. And yeah. Um. I would love to keep going and doing more stuff. Um, but I really have to leave for work soon. <laughs> so, uh. Michaela would just, I'll just say like That's fine, after. so does Aileen yeah. <laughs> um, Oh wait, she does tell you She gives you a, she snickers it, it'll, it'll cost you the usual rate though <laughs> Well I'm don't, sure Don't think you can get away without Paying me this time I'm sure one of My companions has Funds with, They've stashed quite a lot of gold coins from all the tombs that we've plundered. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to let you know, that's going to be the first question I ask, hun. <laughs> Moonlight Shepherds are nice and dutiful, but part of that duty is making sure we're paid. That's how Corsair works. That's how Corsair works to the tune of that's how Mafia work at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. You'll get, you'll get paid. You will. Oh. I, I currently had, with gestures to her armor, uh, currently low on funds. This is, most of it went into the, cre uh, the creation of this. But uh, I'm certain that my companions have money, and then like she runs away. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, and then she would like go on to, you know, inform um, Lady Cesare of the situation and the plan. Um, she wouldn't necessarily invite uh, Cesare to go, considering that's a bit uh, extremely dangerous for a merchant queen. But yeah, we just say that like this is what's happening, and. Uh, yeah, and then I guess and uh, give both Cesare and um, 
and then a, a, a rough timetable, I guess, of when maybe the, the flight is happening. I'm not sure. Okay. And then I, I guess eventually we'll try and you know, stay in uh, Luxnox for a little bit, but eventually make our way back to Zero. Sure thing. You get back uh, just in time. Yeah. Alright, that's it for me. Alright. Next is Twig. Uh, aside from causing problems on purpose, what are you doing? That's my thing. <laughs> me causing problems? You're right, I'm sorry, I shouldn't assume. What, what are you up to for downtime? I'm going to be causing problems on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe I'll save up my problem causing for when I meet up with Pastiche. Yeah, um, uh, it is almost time to, to cut it, so we'll do um, the V Revelge uh, on the next exciting episode. Yeah, uh, but what, sounds good. Yeah, what is your downtime? <clears throat> um, besides that, I think Twig is going to try to go out and buy a couple of bolt cases, and then just search for like like a range or maybe a deserted area. He can set up a couple of bottles to test out a repeat offender. Okay. Like, see how it works. Try... Try a couple tricks with it. Maybe trick reloads. Okay, sick. Yeah, uh, you get pretty handy with it. Um, if you're not already proficient in crossbows, then you are now. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, you learn precisely how a repeat offender works. Um, and you get the sense after like practicing with it and using like calling upon it for a certain number of times that it you get the sense that it that it acknowledges you well um, once he's satisfied i think twig would head back to the library and try to search for some information on Cyril and see if he can find something to verify like the info from the map he got from brian okay uh, that is an intelligence check. <clears throat> Just to make sure it's not complete nonsense. Uh, you can roll up to three intelligence checks. Um, which represent the, the weeks that you're doing this on. It's one, two, and three. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, the information that you find seems pretty profound in it. Um, it discredits some of the map. Um, but uh, yeah, and I'll get you that information over the week. Okay. <clears throat> and I think, like, while he was looking up information, um, just going through some of the books. I think he'd be messing around with uh, Bookmark, just testing out random phrases, just uh, trying to see if he can get it to do anything new. Okay. Yeah, you do learn a few new things about Bookmark. Um, make an Arcana check. <clears throat> okay. Um, you also notice... Uh, now that you're really giving the time toward and like learn trying to learn about bookmark, um, you also notice uh, over the period of your downtime that there's something strange about this weapon. Um, no way. Yeah, it's clearly magical. It it does some funky things. Um, but you notice that there's a little something else going on here, and. Uh, per D and D long rest rules <laughs> and downtime rules, if you interact with with a magic item, you you learn all of its abilities. Bookmark is a dragon shard. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> I see. And um. Uh, you learn further <laughs> command words for it. Okay. I'll get you those. 
casually carrying a dragon shard. Yeah. I wouldn't be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think after that, Tig would uh, meet up with Pastiche to go see our mutual friend. Okay. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, dun, 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 dun. And then everybody, um, if you have funky items that you have not identified in your inventory yet, um, then you can identify them during this downtime, unless you don't want to on purpose, just for the mystery. Because <laughs> I think there are some tingly items that people own but have not there. have not examined. There definitely are. Um, I just end up with a lot of get in her inventory. <laughs> I'm gonna be on it. All right. As everyone kind of goes in their separate ways to finish up things and prepare themselves for what promises to be the closing chapter in this epic journey across Corsair, or at least across one half of Corsair. Uh, everyone prepares themselves both in body and mind and um, and material. You, uh, we, <laughs> we, go, we cut to a shot of Viruvalge, the red dragonborn, slurping back, <laughs> throwing back uh, a drink, and he just kind of like burps at the camera, I guess. I don't know, that was bad. But anyway, we'll end the session there. 